Uh, this is the angiogram of this uh, 63 year old uh, gentleman who presented with acute subarachnoid hemorrhage and uh, angiogram demonstrated uh, middle cerebral artery on the right uh, showing an aneurysm at the bifurcation which is wide neck and incorporating uh, both branches of uh, the M2. This is the 3D rotational angiogram which is uh, showing that uh, this right MCA bifurcation aneurysm uh, is more uh, regular. This is the uh, right IC angiogram which is demonstrating wide neck MC bifurcation aneurysm incorporating both the divisions of M2. Approach to the right side common carotid and you see a small plaque over here and there is some tortuous vessels over here but still we we could manage to put a 7f long sheath and we'll take a distal excess catheter which will go all the way up and we'll try to park it at uh, the cavernous uh, and this is what we could achieve this is a good position of the distal excess catheter over here and this is the coiled left anterocortical artery and this is the m1 and this is the m2 on the both side, the superior and inferior division of the M2, and this is the aneurysm. So we take the balloon, and we take a balloon, and we just uh, go to the branch and we inflate the balloon so that when we are coiling this aneurysm, it should not come and occlude either of the M2 or M1. So we will get the balloon, which is a very important step in doing a balloon-assisted coiling. And when we are preparing a balloon, we have to be very, very careful about certain things. Especially when you are doing a balloon assisted coiling, there is a single lumen balloon and there is a double lumen balloon. So the single lumen balloons are more commonly available and these are the first balloons that were used for balloon assisted coiling. Presently we have double lumen balloon like a Skepter C and C or we have an Eclipse double lumen balloon. Now preparing a single lumen balloon, uh, you just have to take two parts of contrast. So here I am taking 20 cc of contrast and then you take one part of normal saline. So this becomes a 66% contrast and this contrast will be used for preparing the balloon and inflating the balloon. 4 into 10 we have taken and we are going to navigate it with a synchro balloon. So always flush the balloon with contrast not with saline because if you are flushing the balloon with a, take a synchro if you are flushing the balloon with normal saline, when you are inflating, you may not be able to see adequately and you might over inflate the balloon. So I have just inflated the balloon with a 66% contrast and then I am going to add one Y connector to it. And again the Y connector need to be flushed with the 66% contrast. So my entire system, the balloon system is now flushed with 66% pot pulling. I am taking my synchro. So as I am progressing my synchro, I will just keep a side force over here which is again the contrast that I prepared for the balloon and so that the dead space is adequately flushed with the contrast and this is the preparation of the balloon which is a very important step and once we have done that then we give a seam to a wire which will be navigated across the neck of the balloon uh, neck of the aneurysm so I am giving a gentle take off will help me to navigate. So this is the curve I've given. And now I pull my wire to the tip of the balloon. It should always be at the tip of the balloon.
trying to navigate my balloon, we can see the proximal and distal end of the balloon over here. And uh, this is uh, very well placed, this uh, balloon. And I'm trying to take the balloon a uh, little further. So I just push my wire a little. So there's some friction over here. We can see the dyslexis catheter is being pushed down because of the friction over there. But uh, I should be able to put my balloon over the neck. Yes, this is what I want. So this is the distal end of the balloon and this is the proximal end of the balloon. And when you are using a single lemon balloon, ensure that your wire should always be ahead of the balloon. You should never come back with this wire because if you do that, then a little bit of blood can come and uh, it can form a, a clot over the valve and uh, then you can only inflate the balloon and you may not be able to deflate the balloon. That will be a very dangerous scenario. So you just have the proximal and distal end of the balloon over here and the wire is well ahead of the uh, balloon. across the neck of the aneurysm and the coiling catheter that is the SL10 which is inside the aneurysm and now we are going to go ahead with the coil with the balloon inflation and with the inflated balloon we start putting the coil So this is a 3D framing coil which is just uh, going inside. So nice uh, uniform basket. I would love this coil to come over here, fill it a little bit. Yeah, that's much better. So whenever you do a balloon assisted coiling and uh, you want to deflate the balloon so we should do it under a blank road map so that any movement of the coil can very well be seen. So here I am deflating the balloon under a blank road map diagram after putting the first coil. And then few more coils. Again, we are going ahead with the second coil over here and uh, detached. So this is the angiogram after the third coil. So here we can see that the coil mass is nicely conforming into the aneurysm and we should be able to put more coils and fill the gap over here. So the next coil, which is going under the roadmap guidance, uh, this is uh, the gap we have. The coil is moving pretty well without much friction over here. the angiogram after four coils looking pretty good over here then I will go ahead with the one more coil which could be my last my balloon is very well placed it's in a stable position in front of the aneurysm and this is the coil and we can see the coil going in being pushed into here and the coil detachment marker we can see the detachment marker moving here detachment marker moving there
beautifully coiled, a nice stable coil mass and excluded from the circulation.